Well, that was one of the most beautiful butterflies I think I've ever seen. Today I want to plan out how and where I'm going to plant some fall crops and winter crops and where I'm gonna put the trellis or trellises. Also, update on the wooden gate. Is this not focusing on me? Update on the wooden gate. It is doing something weird and I don't really know what's happening. I mean, it's still functioning, it's still working, but that gap at the top is larger than it used to be and I don't know what's, it almost looks like the two posts, the two four x four posts on the sides are like not leaning but bending. And I think we had that huge rain that was on the vlog the, the, last week and maybe they just got really wet and now they're shrinking or, I, I don't know, I don't know what's happening, but it still works, so it's okay for now. I am very happy with the way that this okra is producing right now. You know, the okra got off to a really slow start at the beginning of the season. With it, it, was just, it just was cold for a little bit longer than was normal. But now, uh, it's producing really well. I think I had, I think I picked like seven or eight yesterday. And then today I got um, six. And this morning actually I came out, earlier this morning I came out and um, there was one that I missed yesterday so it was like overgrown so I went ahead and picked it. So really eight today or seven today, sorry. And actually this one is kind of big too. I must have missed it as well. You know, sometimes they just grow like crazy in one day. So maybe I didn't miss it and it just grew a whole lot. I don't know. I want to check the, um, the temperature of the compost pile, compost heap, just to see how it's going. A few more weeks and I'm gonna turn it into the other bay. We did put some wood chips on top of it and some dirt, just a little bit of brown to keep, to cover it with. Um, I think because some of the smell was coming out. That I, the smell doesn't bother me, it really doesn't smell bad. It just, um, wow, the, I don't think I've ever talked about this, but there's um, these plants right here. Maybe I've mentioned it. These are uh, ginger plants and they are flowering and the flowers are really cool. The flowers are really nice. I think, I think that says 120, which is actually pretty cool. So the cooking seems to have slowed down a bit. I think I would, I would want it about around 120 or 130, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of I'm okay with that. I'm gonna move the thermometer around and see if I can see if it's hotter anywhere else. Okay, so it looks like right in the center it is around 130, which is good. 130 is fine, from what I understand. That'll keep cooking. In a couple more weeks, I'll flip it into the other bay here, the empty bay, and then I'll leave it there for several weeks, probably a month or more. And then hopefully it'll be done. If it's not, then it just sits for longer. And then I just would really like to have some fresh homemade compost to supplement the plants that I plant for fall and winter. By the time winter comes around, I should definitely have uh, some compost, hopefully. I mean, I should have it in fall at some point. It shouldn't take, I don't know, we'll see. So the soil temperature uh, for, at where, the, where I planted these cucumbers is around 80 degrees. And I was just curious about that because um, 
they sprouted in three days, three and four days, which is crazy. But I, I just guess the conditions were ideal and they were like, okay, well, perfect soil temperature, right moisture. They just went ahead and sprouted, I guess. I don't know. The package on them says, the package that they came in says that they sprout within seven to 14 days. But clearly, when you plant them in warm soil with enough moisture, that is not the case. I'm going to mark out where I want to put a bed over here today. Um, but first thing is I gotta, I gotta get this marigold out of the way. Uh, not all of it, it's just I'm just gonna trim this marigold up because it's just like all up in my way right now. Okay, that gives me a little bit more room to work with. Now I'm just gonna measure out um, three feet wide by whatever I can make it long. And then I'm gonna mark it. I'm gonna mark, I'm gonna mark each corner temporarily with just one of these, um, whatever they are, support post things. Okay, so that's a three feet by six feet little bed and that's just gonna be, my plan is to just plant um, things that don't need a trellis here. So that would be carrots, lettuce, um, onions, garlic, anything that doesn't need a trellis, anything that just stays low to the ground. Uh, and we will be, we should be planting those pretty soon. I wanna go ahead and just plant them pretty soon, like like this week maybe even, um, at least a few of them just to see if it works. Um, you know, I've, I, I've done so much research just watching YouTube videos and reading about, reading blogs and reading papers about, you know, when to plant stuff and how to do everything. And I think one of the things that I'm learning is just that like, of course you could, you should pay attention to the, to the guidelines of when to plant certain things, but your, my space is different, you know? The shade is different here. The sun is different and how long the sun hits and the soil is a different temperature and a different makeup. So I'm just gonna try it. I'm just gonna do it and see what happens. The worst case scenario, that one little square foot that I plant in, you know, if I plant 12 carrots in one square foot, maybe they don't produce. Well then next the next week I'll plant another square foot of carrots and so maybe that one will produce. So I don't know, I'm just gonna try things trial and error and just see how it goes. But I'm gonna, my, my plan is to do this bed as a square foot bed, so I'll mark out the square footage. Um, so this should be what, six by three. And there'll be 18 squares. Um, and there's a wasp. That'll be 18 squares, 18 one, one by one squares. And I'll just plant individual crops in each square. So one square will be carrots and the square right next to that might be onions or whatever. Okay, I'm sure you could tell all I did there was just duplicate um, that bed. So now I have two three by six beds next to each other and they're spaced one and a half feet apart. So should be enough room to get in between them and that should be a decent amount of planning room. I think uh, at the beginning of this uh, planning season when we first planted all of this, um, I did a little bit of planning and tried to figure out how I wanted to do things but I don't think I did a very good job. I think there's like way too much empty space, but the problem that I found was with things like zucchini and squash, they need a lot of room because they spread out, but we did take them vertically, but even when you take them vertically, they still, their leaves get so big, they still just branch out and kind of take up so much space. So I want to figure out a way um, for next summer to have the squash and zucchini somewhere else. I mean, I love squash and zucchini. I'm going to grow them. I just want them not in the way. And I think this is plenty of space here 
um, to be able to grow squash and zucchini and lots of other stuff. So I think, I don't know, but this, I, th I think this is a good start. The laying out these beds and then doing the square foot uh, method so that I know exactly how much I can of carrots and how much of onions I can plant in one square foot based on what other people say. And then that should help keep things compact for those. And then the squash and zucchini can just go somewhere else next year. But for now, I think this is gonna work. All right, I ate lunch and now I'm back out. And in addition to the two three by six beds, I want to go ahead and plan out where I want a trellised um, spot to be, which I'm finding kind of difficult because it's just a lot of stuff that doesn't make any sense to where it is right now. I might just move stuff. And also these marigolds are so dang big, taking up all the space. Okay, so in addition to there just being things like these marigolds being kind of huge and in the way and there's just other things around in the way. I also am trying to think about the sun position and um, the south is that direction. And you kind of want ideally plants to be facing the south because the summer sun kind of goes from, from east but in the southern sky to west. So if you want a lot of sun exposure, your, your plants should be exposed to the south. But it's kind of difficult to do in the, the arrangement of this garden currently, so I'm just kind of not really going to worry about it. I'm just going to plant stuff and just see how it goes uh, this season. And this pipe here is kind of indicating where I'm thinking the best spot for the first trellis is going to be. Um, I'm trying to like not, it needs to not shade other things out because once, I think beans are going to be planted here. I think once the beans, you know, are all the way to the top of this trellis, they're going to create a lot of shade. So I'm trying not to shade other things out. But again, it's just all trial and error. Just trying to figure out what can work as best as possible. And then if I am not really sure, I'm just going to do it and then see what happens. And that is the bulk of the trellis assembly. Um, obviously, on top of this will go um, twine that I had to order. Well, you can. Well, there's multiple ways you can do it. Um, for beans, actually, I might not even need this pole. I just wanted to test it out and see if it worked. But for beans, I might just take the twine and starting at the bottom of these T-posts, just uh, go from one to the other and wrap it around and then up as I up the T-post and then that would just create a system of twine that the beans can grab onto and climb up. So it's like super easy, not complicated at all. I did not come up with this. Josh Satin um, has a video on this that has like 1.6 million views of creating this type of trellis. It's just really easy. It's relatively inexpensive. And for me, what's most important is that it's movable, easily movable. Um, with no with no wood with like if I had built this out of wood It would have been much more difficult to move because this is probably not going to stay in this position because this garden is probably gonna be completely redone next season, so I Needed to be able to easily move it and this is easily movable. It is really hot out here today and um, I don't really want to be out here when it's the hottest part of the day But before I go in I want to check one other thing about the compost pile Earlier I checked the temperature, but now I want to check moisture and see if it's still moist. That's a, a good compost heap will be moist, but not dripping wet. Um, if it is dry, then I'm going to need to water it a bit.
I definitely think it's moist down in the center. It's definitely hot. I think it's okay. I might add a bit of water in a few days or something. But for now, I think it's fine. Okay, so last thing I need to do today is water because it was a very dry day, there was no rain. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and plant some beans and underneath the new trellis frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant um, two varieties of beans here. I have just a lima bean a Christmas pole and dragon tongue. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and plant these two. I don't really know how well they're gonna do in this spot, but they should be fine. They, um, I think they're about around 70-ish days to maturity, to harvest and I have like 90 something days left before the first frost here, so we're gonna try it out. And I'm just gonna do a few. Um, I don't wanna end up wasting a whole bunch if they end up not working. So this is sort of just trial, so I'm just gonna do a few of each and hopefully they'll work. <laughs> 